have you have you moved on? Do you feel like you're you're healed now, or? It brings up it brings up feelings of aggravation, but to answer your question. What's going on guys, I'm Speedy and the name of this show is 360 with Speedy and today I am joined by Newberg's very own Partisan Fontaine. Party, what's up man, how are you? I'm good, I'm happy to be here. Happy to have you, uh, it's, a, it's a fun time for you. Your project Sex Tape is out right now uh, and we'll talk about that in just a minute but how are you feeling? How's, the, how's this moment right now for Party? Um, it's bittersweet but I think, that's, uh, I think that's what everything in life, you know, has ups and downs. But I'm really happy to be here and able to talk about the music, you know? Yeah. What's the sweet part? The sweet part is my creativity is back on display. My, my vocal range is being displayed to uh, some people for the first time. Uh, the creative that I put into my visuals is back on display. A lot of stuff that I just haven't been able to do in so long. So I, I really, really like, uh, I really like that I'm able to do that right now. Yeah. And then what's the bitter part? The bitter part is... Uh, just being attached to some things that are negative, you know what I mean? And, and But, you know, people always have something to say, good or bad. You can't let it stop you, whether it be praise or, you know, or uh, something offensive. Yeah, fair. All right. Uh, let's go back to the beginning for a second. You worked at a Nike factory. I did. You also... Yeah, how you know that? Is it your job to know? I just do my research. Okay. Um, you also were a teacher. Substitute teacher, yo. Uh, what other jobs did you work? Um, substitute teacher, Nike factory, uh, what else did I do? Uh, I worked at Saks All Fifth, like the warehouse in Woodbury Commons. Um, and that's part of the reason why your name is what it is, right? Absolutely. Nah, you really did your research. You know, for real, for real. Nah, yeah, I worked at Woodbury. Um, a couple other odd jobs, but yeah. For, I worked at a factory for, for like one day. I got to the, uh, what do you call that? The, uh, not initiation, but the uh, orientation. Orientation. Right? So I get there and the guy's like, uh, yeah, you guys, I'm making $20 an hour. We just make pallets or whatever the case may be. I'm like, $20 an hour is good. He said, yeah, I've only been here for 20, 20 years. I'm at management now. It scared the shit out of me. I went right back to the studio. And that was it? Yeah, I went right back to the studio. I know that you used to carry around your benefit card in your mm -hmm. wallet. Do you still carry it? Right behind, right behind the Amex. Is it still there now? No, I lost it. No, I, lo I lost that wallet, so okay. I don't got it no more. But I kept it there, it used to keep me in check. So that's probably why I spend more frivolously than I, I used to, because I lost it. <laughs> As a reminder, when you pulled out the Amex, you would see- You would see it like, yo. Your old food yeah, stamp card. be careful, yeah. You, we probably don't need this $500 t-shirt. And I'd be like, ah, you know? Let me, let me put this back on the rack. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. funny. Fuck it, I don't need it. Um, musically, I wonder, is it frustrating for you that so many people herald you as a great writer, maybe sometimes overshadowing your own music? Um, at times, it could be like, oh, this is what we know him for, and that, that's fine. People going to know you what, but I know to so many more, it's like, nah, son, get busy. He get, you know what I'm saying? His own music is fire. I get a... Uh, I, I like to see the interaction, the repost from people, the people who just showing them playing it on their story in their car, wherever they at. So that's that's what's really important to me, the, the people that I'm tapped in with uh, through my music. For sure. Now, writing is obviously an integral part of the music making process. Yeah. And, you know, it's not an easy thing. When did you realize that you had a pen in a way that maybe is superior to other people? Uh, from the first day I started rapping, I swear to God, my first freestyle that I ever wrote for myself, I'm like, yeah, I'm better than niggas. You know what I'm saying? I thought, I thought the moment I wrote that freestyle, I was about to get signed that day. Clearly, 10 years later, I still wasn't signed. But I always felt like I had a way with words. So that's what even drawn me to do the, to do the music. And uh, through putting out my own, my own stuff, people that I respected just gravitated to me like, yo, what you think about this? Like, you, you know what I mean? I started helping people out with their own. Who's your favorite person that you've written for and collaborated with? Um, my favorite person? I feel like all of my takeaways is always so different. But like, you know what I'm saying? I, have, I, had, a, I had a great time with, uh, with Ye, you know what I'm saying? That was, that was fun. He's always been somebody that was one of my favorite artists uh, from college dropout to Dark Twisted Fantasy. So just having that opportunity is, was, was crazy. Yeah, Man. Kanye, that's a, 
A legend for sure. Um, let's talk about your sex tech project. On the first song on the project, you said, even if I flop when I drop and my record go cardboard. I know my good, I know my heart pure. Yeah. Yeah, like it don't matter. Like, you know, it's never been about, it's never been about the numbers to me. You know what I mean? Like I, me, I did, there was a time I didn't know Billboard existed. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know it was a thing. So I always just wanted the respect of my hood. I wanted them, when they talked about Newberg in a, in a conversation or in a barbershop, I wanted my name to come up. You know what I mean? I wanted to be the nicest one from where I was from. Um, I feel like that today. Like when y'all bring me up, just bring up how nice I am. Bring up like I fuck with, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's what I wanted. So it don't really matter what the numbers say. Before the project, you released a song mm -hmm. called The Person. It was about a former uh, relationship that you were in. Mm -hmm. uh, why did you feel like that was the best medium for you to approach that? Before I even answer this question, I feel like people who don't know how interviews go, like we came here to talk about, you know, sex tape, right? And we're gonna talk about it, but chances are they're gonna clip this up, you know? They're gonna clip this part up and it's gonna seem like I'm, it's all I'm harvesting, you know, I'm all I'm speaking on. So I, I don't wanna give that no energy to the people that don't know how interviews work. Um, but I'm an artist and I express my feelings through music and I felt like that was the most appropriate way to do so. Was it a difficult record for you to make? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, nothing I ever thought I would have to do. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't plan on doing anything like that or speaking on any parts of any relationships that I had. So then what, what was it that made you decide like, all right, I have to do this to defend my name or, or maybe even just to vent? Yeah, I mean, especially as an artist and as a, as a father, as a, a person that stands on, on my name, my name being good, like, I felt like it's something just had to be cleared up or at least put into perspective. Yeah. I imagine that when you are on a press tour promoting your project and people are asking you about former relationships mm -hmm. or um, lines in songs, mm -hmm. it must get exhausting and frustrating. Mm -hmm. How have you been handling it while also knowing that, you know, these are questions that people want to know? Yeah, I'm not going, I'm not trying to dodge no questions or nothing like that. I just, I know what, I know what I'm promoting. I know that this is part of, uh, part of promoting music, you know what I'm saying? So people are going to ask questions that you don't want to be asked. They're going to ask things that you have no care to even talk about, you know? So I try my best to navigate them gently or delicately, you know what I'm saying? But uh, that's how I got to do it. Megan went on Instagram Live and spoke on you on your press run, and she had mentioned that if you felt as if you didn't cheat, then why did you acknowledge the line that she had said on the song? Um, I imagine you're still consuming this information as it just I was about happened. to say, I didn't see this live. Yeah. I, it, didn't, I didn't know this happened. So I guess without having time to consume it and just going off of the reaction of what you're feeling now, how does it feel to have heard her say something like that? What was that exactly? Essentially, she said that you're on a press tour and you are um, speaking about not cheating on her. And she said, well, then, if you didn't cheat on me, then why did you react to the line in the song if it wasn't about you? She actually, she said, you said you didn't cheat, so why you thought that bar was for you? I don't recall saying that at all, but um, I mean, I guess she's entitled to whatever narratives she would like to uh, put out or however she would like to do so. But I'm here talking about my music, as we see. You, you asked me about my music, and this just so happens to be a part of my life. Part I didn't necessarily ever think I needed to talk about. But here we are. When you open up your phone and you see people resurfacing things that you feel you've probably gotten past, is it like a fresh reminder of something? Is it, what exactly is the emotion that you feel when, when things like this come back up? I like to think about how did we get here? What, what was the cause of, of us having these conversations that we're having? Like, and I just know that it wasn't me. I didn't, I didn't start this 
press run, you know, uh, on my own. I'm here to talk about my music, and that's all I would have ever had to talk about. Um, when uh, people say what they say, I, you know, pay no mind. You know what I mean? A lot of people are smart. Some people aren't. And you got to just live with that fact that we got to share the planet at the same time as some of these misinformed, uninformed people. But such is life. Such is life. Uh, have you have you moved on? Do you feel like you're you're healed now, or? I am definitely in a place where I was that I'm happier than I was months ago. You know, I was. Uh, I am enjoying life. This this part of it now is become more challenging, a little bit more difficult. But um, I had done my I had done my made my peace with uh, all prior situations as I was happy to be dwelling in new relationships and uh, just moving forward. So it it brings up it brings up feelings of aggravation, but to answer your question, yes, I, I've, I felt like I was a lot better than prior to this. What was the approach when making the sex tape? Did you go into it with the project in mind or did you go at it with a single uh, approach and then compiled it all together? I just went and created whatever I felt when I heard like certain instrumentals, you know what I mean? I just, I had a bunch of songs that uh, some older, some newer, but I put them all together as a way to display the full range, you know? Um, and I wanted to have fun, you know? I felt like it had been a long time since so I had fun uh, recording and, and putting out uh, visuals. So I wanted to get back to the fun. I think a lot of it is fun. I think I touched notes and harmonies, harm, harmonies and melodies that I hadn't before. So that's what uh, the sex tape is compiled of, a bunch of stuff I wanted to do for the first time and just get out there. Cardi B is someone who you've collaborated with a bunch. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys have a hit record together, backing it up. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard you say that she's a marketing genius. Cardi's a genius, period, on so many levels. Just, I, I say this all the time, she'd have been a star no matter what she chose to do. Like, she would have been a star. She's, that's what she is. What's something that she did that made you realize, oh shit, she's a marketing genius? She was really like, she really pioneered a lot of the, 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 the energy that you see on the internet right now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's the first person to grab her phone and, and really start talking shit into it. You know what I'm saying? Unapologetically herself. Like, and, and her persona is like, you know what I'm saying? Is ringing off through the industry. You know what I mean? Something that that highly braggadocious, highly talking shit, you know what I'm saying? Uh, straight ignorant shit. It's, uh, she crafted that, you know what I'm saying, from her own iPhone, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And it's a genius at a time where we really ain't had that. Yeah, she's someone that you've known for years. Mm -hmm. Do you remember before she really, truly made it, a moment in which you was like, damn, that was brilliant. That was very smart of you to do. I could tell you, I could tell you one thing she did for me personally, like, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, damn. I couldn't have did this myself. I couldn't have done this no better. Um, when I was first coming up, I had this song called Oi, right? Uh, that's when we like first started getting real mm -hmm. cool. And um, out of nowhere, unprovoked, you know what I'm saying? Just out of being my homie, she uh, she makes a video on her Instagram at a gas station, dancing to the song, turning up to the song at a gas station. And it's like a regular Honda Sonata or something. It's a regular car. And people are just commenting like, oh, why she pumping home gas? Why she got this car? Da, 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 that's the car she got. And I'm like, yo, for no reason other than her liking the song and being cool with me, she just went up. You know what I'm saying? That shit went up on my page, helped me out. So I'm like, that was that was genius. I couldn't have done that on my own. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have her taking the gas pump and doing all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's pure genius. Do you feel like it was methodical of her to have that car and pumping her own gas? Like, uh, I know that people will attached to that but the song is playing in the background so it's all like a big either ploy. either either is genius or she just keeps getting lucky bro like you know what i'm saying like she's just been getting lucky since 2016 like you know what i mean like so i, I gotta attribute it to her uh, greatness yeah i think if somebody can do it multiple times in a row it's not luck anymore yeah you know what i mean that's the skill i'm just yeah i'm going with the greatness for sure do you still hoop these days Yo, bro, I'm, the way this body is set up now, bro, I don't think I'm as mobile. But, like, I could, I could probably 
I hoop a lot of rappers though. Not ball players, you know what I'm saying? When yeah, I go yeah. when I go play ball with real ball players, I'm limited. I'm like, you know, catch and shoot, rebound, uh, you know, but every now and then. Shout out to C Brick too. Whenever he has his open runs, I'll pull up to those. I were, okay. Yeah. Boogie being there, Rowdy being there yeah, all the time. Exactly. Yo, Rowdy can hoop too. Rowdy's I forgot. a high. I left him off, I left him off one of the rosters that somebody asked me. Rowdy could hoop. No, he actually is a high. Yeah, he could. I forgot. Shout out to him. I did see you make one of the dirtiest plays I've ever seen Ooh. in basketball. Yeah, let's talk about that. Do you Come know on. what I'm talking yes, about? Yes, I do, bro. They pin that to my name still. I bet. Let's add the context, though, for the people who haven't seen it. All right, but Crew League. I got cheated out of Crew League. But whatever, we ain't going to talk about that. Um, we had, if you watched the play before, I'm guarding like seven-foot NBA star, first-round draft pick, Amir Johnson. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and we bumping. It's me and him. We physical, pause. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we trying to get position and all of this shit. Pause again. Um... But at the particular play that's in question, I'm thinking like, yo, he's seven foot and strong. Like I'm about to get, I'm about to get low for this rebound, right? I go to get low, his waist is all the way up here. Like this sounds crazy, but I, I fall, I fall, and his legs are like under me. So he kind of like just does an awkward fall down. I'm falling on his legs. It looked like I took him out on purpose. Me being it a definitely hooper, look like yeah, that. I'm not taking nobody out on purpose. He was just, you know, what I'm saying he's just taller than I thought. So when I got into position, I guess it caught him off guard, and he kind of just, you know, my bad. I hit him up after the game, like, bro, you know, you know, what I'm saying, you know, I ain't like that. He agreed, you know what I mean. But it does look bad. I seen it. I seen it on camera. It looked bad, and I'm not like that. There People was no Draymond Green <laughs> over here. That was that wasn't me. People still approach you or ask you about that? Um, on the clips, you know what okay, I'm saying? Okay. When the clips come up or like certain posts, they'd be like, nah, he's a dirty player, you know what I'm saying? But let me clear the air right there. I was just trying to get low for a rebound. Uh, he's taller than I thought. That was it. Okay, bet. We could put that to bed. Yeah. All right, well, the sex tape is out now. Make sure you guys go check it out. Party, I appreciate you, my boy. Thank you, thank you. Love.